As a former high school wrestler and current jiu-jitsu competitor, I've never felt like I did a perfect job preparing for a competition. But this past weekend, I came pretty close. I definitely don't have this figured out and there's different variables for different people, but I thought I'd share the things that I do when preparing for a grappling competition. First and foremost, you need to train hard. If none of your training simulates a competition pace, then you're in trouble. If you're anything like me, you have an extreme fear of getting tired during a match. So I use that fear as motivation to keep pushing even when I've been in bottom side control for the last five minutes. But not every day should be a hard day. In the few weeks leading up to a competition, I train five days a week and make two or three of those days a hard practice. Number two, train safe. While training till near death is crucial, you also need to train safely. If you slept like crap last night and you trained super hard yesterday, today might be a good day to take it easy. Do some drills, eat a healthy dinner, and go to bed. And God forbid, if you do get injured, God. Number three, and perhaps the most underrated piece of advice on this list, do something besides grappling. It's easy to let an upcoming competition occupy too much of your mental and physical energy, so take a day or two to do literally anything else. Number four, study film or don't. I actually try to avoid watching jujitsu or wrestling when I have a competition coming up. It just gives me anxiety and I don't need that. But sometimes there's a match that you can't miss. And while I was preparing for this last competition, the NCAA wrestling championships were happening. So here's a video of Spencer Lee breaking my heart. For those of you who may not know, Spencer Lee is a three-time national champion, gunning to be the fifth person to ever win four national championships. And in the semifinals, he fell short. But I still look forward to watching him get his hand raised on the biggest stage and taking home that Olympic gold medal. Number five, more conditioning. No matter how many times your coach tells you that technique is king, strength matters a lot. I can't give away all my secrets here, but uh, on top of the two to three hard practices that you're doing every week, try to mix in some low heart rate training or some calisthenics, or if you're feeling crazy, do leap frogs. I made a short video about this. But in case you didn't see it, I did this for years as wrestling conditioning, and I can honestly say that it helps my vertical and it helped my double legs so much. To start it out, just set the timer for five minutes, pick a partner, pick two lines, and just alternate going back and forth. Trust me that by the time five minutes is up, that will be enough. If you are brave enough to try five minutes of lead frogs, Comment below how many days it took you to feel normal again. Number six, find out what works for you. Like I mentioned earlier, I've probably had 200 matches in my life and I'm still figuring this stuff out. But through trial and error, you'll find the right timing and rituals that work for you. Sometimes it's the little things. I eat gummies before every competition and I chew gum while competing. Just, just as an example. Number seven, cutting weight. In my personal experience, don't do it if you don't have to. For those of you who have forced yourself into extreme dehydration like I have, you know what I'm talking about. It's really not good for your body, it's not good for your mental health. Avoid it if possible. But if you do need to cut weight, or if you've never cut weight before and you're doing it for the experience, which I actually think is a valid reason, whether you're an avid competitor, a JV superstar, or a hobbyist, I hope you found this video helpful in some way. New competition video is coming soon. Click the buttons, and I'll see you in the next one.